Welcome to another edition of Walnut Grove Cultural Conversations, where two local pastors, one and two, take a swing and sometimes swing and a miss at current life issues, current events, uh, just from our perspective and hopefully from your perspective as well. We want you to engage in the conversation. And so today, we got the Super Bowl hangover, right? We're trying to recover from that game, the game of the ages. That fell flat. That hopefully is over, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's finally the over. The COVID Bowl is done. Yes. So. And so we were curious, kind of, this idea of what was your favorite Super Bowl commercial? Because when the game stinks, you got to turn to the commercials. Am I right? Yes, exactly. And that would seem to be the highlight, I guess, this yeah. year. Unless you're a Tampa Bay Buccaneer fan. Yes, that's true. Congratulations to the GOATs. You know, I heard someone say, if you've been a Tampa Bay Buccaneer fan for the last, like, six months, because we don't think anyone for the last 20 years exists, <laughs> uh, welcome to the party, pal. But no, um, but no, so, so yeah, let me throw that out. What was your favorite commercial? Well, um, I really enjoyed, I thought it was kind of creepy, but the Matthew McConaughey 3D Doritos. Inside the, the chip dispenser? Yes, where, yeah. he's, where he's standing there, Matthew, and he's in the yeah. Starbucks, and it's not, <laughs> that was hysterical, and I don't know if I'm excited or not about 3D Doritos being back in my, like, nostalgic brain. Yeah. Great, let's do this, let's bring it back, Be but. Scared of how they actually taste. Yeah, let's yeah. hope that yeah. it doesn't ruin a childhood memory again. Yeah. Like when they bring back everything of my youth. But what was your favorite, do you think? My favorite humorous one yes. was the electric vehicles with Will Ferrell. Oh, yes. <laughs> where, he, where he tells him, like, we're going to beat Norway. <laughs> and then he ends up, what, in Sweden? Yes. And, like, the other group ends up in Finland? Yes. And he's ticked off, and he's mad. He's like, yeah. Yeah, he's ticked. Surely Will's flying first class, and he's in a freighter. That was yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, so. That was a good one. And then the, the Michael B. Jordan one with Alexa. Okay. Like, the, the greatest embodiment of what Alexa could look like. And it, the lady's like, well, Michael B. Jordan, of course. <laughs> That's right? Good. He still looks like he could do Creed. And, like, he's got the abs oh, going. And, uh, I, but, uh, I love it. There's always some good ones. So. Yeah. What was your favorite, maybe more serious one? Oh, let's see. I They kept playing the Lombardi one uh, where, he, you know, at the beginning of the, of the Super Bowl, before the National Anthem, they had that, like, hologram yeah, situation. And they played it a couple of times. Cool. Um trying to think of other more serious ones that I enjoyed. You know, I have a toddler running around, so staying dialed in on all of the commercials is a little hard. What about you? The the one that stands out, just given our background, having gone through a few adoptions, um, was the one about the Paralympian, who the adopted parents get this call that they're doing an international adoption, and the the child they're going to adopt has a serious illness, and they're going to be amputating both legs. Yeah. And just the willingness to say, yes, you know, we're still going to do this and it's going to be hard, but it's going to be amazing. I think that was her line. Yeah. Like, it's going to be hard, but it's going to be amazing. Yeah. And just resonating with that sense of like, man, there are times where this is so hard, but it's still amazing. Yeah. It was, it was such a powerful thing because the way that, that that commercial was shot at first, you're like, what's going on? Because it starts out with just her as an adult and then you're like there's this child here what's going on and then you put to you piece it together and it's just this powerful yeah, telling her whole story yeah it's a powerful yeah. moment of like giving you know do leaning into the hard stuff like you said is yeah. just really and honestly i don't even know what they were selling what was that commercial about i mean uh, her story but was was it selling something or i think there was a lot of times during the there's always those commercials that stand out of like what was that selling me yeah. but there were a lot of times during the super bowl in particular where um, the product kind of took the background, and I think it's just because people want to buy into brands that have that align with them. Yeah, and and you see a lot of the messaging and yeah. marketing going into something that I think we can all get behind on some level. That it really in twenty twenty and on into twenty twenty one has been a challenge, and yeah. that was unifying and being one and being a team. Yeah, and I think you hit this is. Most of these commercials started to answer a different question. Before, it was, what are you selling? Mm-hmm. 
And now the answer, the question they were answering is, who are we? Yeah. We- WeatherTech. Yeah. Okay, like if you if you didn't know what WeatherTech was, you still don't know who WeatherTech is currently and what yeah. they sell. But you know that they value American jobs and American manufacturing. Yeah, and they've never left. And they've yeah. never left. We don't have to bring it back because we've never left. Yeah. And so I know that about WeatherTech. I, I assume it's that... It's like uh, floorboard protectors. Right, right. Yeah, they're okay. custom cut for your I car. thought I saw it on the box as it was going down yeah. the assembly line. Um, but over and over again, that seems to be the thing. And I think it's... One thing to know is the, the amount of money that is spent on commercials for the Super Bowl really can give you a uh, a good view of what marketing research and what you know the people like Mad Men are making up that say this is how you sell your product yeah. and a lot of it really was hey um, we realize that we have to be a company that is for all sides for all people let's talk about unity bringing people together yeah. and uh, I think that that I mean a Jeep Jeep commercial, right? Yeah, the Jeep commercial. We can get through this because it's a hard thing. We can do the over and over again. And so if you didn't see the Jeep commercial, it was this idea of like the very middle of the United States. They go to the very middle, and at the very middle of the United States, there's this chapel, and it pictures this, I mean, there's nothing else around it. But the words kind of is like, it's hard living in the middle. Yeah. And I think it says something about it's hard to live in the middle in this red and blue country, like that's so divided by it. Yeah. Um, and like their, their tagline was like the reunited States of America. Oh, okay. Something like that. I like that. And it, and that's the sense of like, right. Their marketing reach is just saying people feel more divided and more polarized, more politically distant from each other. And so like, we got to do something to pull this together. Yeah. And, and as I think through that as a, as a local pastor, I'm thinking, man, that's great that their message is unity. But as a Christian, we have the ultimate unifier if we're doing this right. Yeah. Around Jesus. Yeah, because I think that's one of the things, right, is you can you can say or sell unity. Right. But it's unifying to what end or for what cause. Right. Unity in two-minute segments or a 30-second uh, commercial is easier than actually in real life. Yeah, and I think, you know, what is it that unifies? What is it that brings us together? You know, there's there's that conversation over and over and over again in the church. You know, the, I mean, going back a few years now, right? The worship wars. What is it that unifies us? What's, what is it that makes us one? What is it that makes us a congregation just in a small local one right. congregation? But then even well, larger, what is it that ties us together? And like you said, it's the the best unifier. Right. Well, and that, I mean, the Christian church historically has, has wrestled with this. I mean, we had this saying that in essentials, unity, in non-essentials, liberty, and in all things, charity or love. Mm. And I think we've come back to a place where we need that more than ever. And we have to decide what are the essentials that are going to unify us as a country, as a local church? Um, What are the non-negotiables? And then from there, we're going to have to, at some point, accept people who think differently on the non-essentials, or we're never going to have a world of charity and love that really defines us as believers and defines us, hopefully, as a nation and into the world. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing is, hopefully, you realize that with Stephen and... And myself, and then with also hopefully our church and our leaders at this church, that this isn't a marketing ploy, that this isn't a sales tactic, but that this is something that is at the forefront. It's been at the forefront of our church background, the non-denominational, the the, the non-denominational denomination. Yeah, the non-denominational. I always it's always hard to explain that, but the Stone Campbell movement, right, yeah. that goes back to the Cane Ridge revival in Kentucky all those years ago, really does thrust us into this conversation of. They will know us by the way we love one another, and right. Jesus' prayer, please, like, make them one. John. His, or John, John 14, yeah. yeah, where he's praying about these it's, things. It's interesting, the very foundation of the Christian church comes in the time when there's polarization and there's, there's evangelical divides all over the place, yeah. right? The Campbells are Presbyterian at the time, and there's like seven different versions of Presbyterian, all these boxes you have to check. Like, right. what are those little flow charts where you're like, if you're this, continue. If not, oh, yeah. you know? And it's like, there's this wild chart on there, and, and they finally get to the end, and they're broken up seven different ways or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they're like, there's got to be something better than this. Mm-hmm. And so the, the restoration movement that we're a part of says, let's go back to that picture in the New Testament, that model from the book of Acts, where believers have everything in common to the best of their ability, and are around God's word, and are breaking bread together, and are loving each other well. And that's why people are being added to their numbers daily. Yeah. Um, hmm. And so it's like we can get caught up in these conversations and these debates that are fringe or 
outside of daily life, if we would just do the essentials well, yeah, maybe that's the thing. We're debating the non-essentials over and over and over again, and we're trying to figure out what they are. Yeah. But if we would do the things we know are essential well, mm. I think it would change how we live and how we work. Yeah. I, earlier, you made the statement that I think it was a Jeep commercial that said the reunited states of America. Yeah. And I think that from the view of a local pastor, not just the reunited states of America, but the re, the restored, the reunited Church of Christ. The reunited Church of God, the I, body I think of that Christ. Exists. I think is that in Independence, Missouri? Yeah, like, you know, <laughs> but no, but no, but I, but no, like, right, but right. Like, like, I think that that is the that is the call for us is <laughs> to is to be is to be focused on on, yeah. on not the things that make us different, but the things that make us the same. The shared experiences, the things that uh, allow us to be one. And not just lip service to that, but an actual common cause, a common call, which yeah. is the cross. I mean, we're in a common condition. That's the thing. Like, whether you're a Hindu, a Muslim, an atheist, you think science is real, or you think science is a kooky kook, we're all in this human condition of, of brokenness now. Right. And trying to figure out, and sometimes, like, having people tell you their story of, how do you think we fix this? Mm. You get a lot of insight into where their hope is. Yeah. Because that's really what every worldview is trying to answer is how do we fix this? Yeah. Okay, we're in the same condition. We something's broken. Mm-hmm. Can we can we agree on that? Yeah. I mean that unifies I mean, us, right? Clearly all those commercials thought something like most of those unifying commercials thought something was broken yes. that needed unified. Yeah. And so what we're saying as Christians is we think this is a worldview, right? One picture of the the whole system from beginning to middle to end. And we think we have some of these answers on how to put the world back together because God has revealed them to us. Because I don't know you, we tried man's wake. Yeah, over and over wake. and over and over again. Um, and no, that is the temptation is to use man's way. Yeah, that's really the garden issue. Right. Right. We don't need God and we can have a full life without him. I mean, I was reading my kids this in the Jesus Story Bible last night. And okay. we went back and started over. Right. Jesus Story Bible. Check it out. Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. But if they want to sponsor yeah. us, we are open to that. Yes. We can uh, fill this bookshelf with Jesus yeah, Story Bible. Like, we have plenty this of This can be condensed. Don't you worry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I know I, we got to get back on track. One of the things is I know that this probably isn't what you thought a Super Bowl commercial vlog would be about, but I think that um, it is important to have that conversation and it is important to think about what is being sold to us, but then also what is it that, um, what is the church's role in all of this and how does it work? And so there's a few things that we, w- we would like you to do is comment down below what your favorite yeah. Give us number one. Commercial. Yeah. Give but, us maybe you the funniest and then maybe the one that touched you the most. Yeah. The most powerful. It'll be fun to kind of have a conversation about that. It's always fun to talk about the uh, the different things that happened and the things we saw. How many people are going to come with the Jason Alexander one? Oh, gosh. Like the Seinfeld lovers are going to be like, that was my favorite. I'm like, yeah. Hi. It's like, I think we can see. I think we, it'll be fun to see that and, uh, and see what you guys have down below. And uh, yeah, just have a conversation and then we encourage you. Uh, Unify around the cross and be one um, and seek unity, not division. All right? Much love and be blessed. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.